Hello everyone, hope you're doing really well. Um, today's video is going to be the start of a new series where I do some black and white landscape photography critiques. Um, each episode is going to be looking at uh, one artist's work. Uh, so I've asked everyone to send in uh, three to five images and um, we'll take a look at some of the ideas that's being discussed in the work, some of the compositions, uh, post-processing, and maybe even how it all works together uh, as a bigger collection or under a theme. So it's uh, really cool that Hatter Editions has come on board to support the series. Um, so they're going to be supplying one or two of the artists of our choosing from this with a fine art print. Um, so if you want to get involved, uh, there's more details down below in the description box. Um, but for today, we're going to be looking at an artist out of Calgary, Canada, uh, Jeremy Callow. He's a, a friend of mine and he's submitted five really uh, strong images from up in the Rockies. So they're all mountain scenery, uh, shot on 4x5 film, I believe, uh, Firma 400. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about consistency of your st of style um, and potentially some minor inconsistencies uh, in Jeremy's work, but overall I think these are really strong images. Uh, so I've got them all loaded up in Lightroom and Photoshop. Let's go ahead and jump in. So these are the five images that Jeremy sent in, and right away we can see four out of five are these wonderful mountain scenes uh, from the Rockies. And one stands out as being pretty much completely different sort of a more intimate uh, scene in the woods. And this is where I want to start to get into um, consistency across the body of work and sort of a, a clarity of artistic vision. Um, for me, these four clearly uh, go together incredibly well. And this one just sort of sticks out like a sore thumb, really. Um, maybe it would work if there was if it was paired with uh, a number of other images like it across, you know, a series of uh, 40 or 50 photographs in a book. But within this sort of small set of five, it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll get into a bit later the, the actual image itself and why I don't feel as though it's strong enough to sort of compete with these big uh, grand landscape views. Um, but yeah, overall, I think the, the four that do work together uh, really are a pretty, pretty cool set of images. Um, there is a little bit, again, we talk about consistency, um, there's sort of a change in, in format between 4x5 and a slightly wider composition here. Um, and I'm not sure if that's, uh, that's such a good thing. Maybe this one could have not been 4x5. You can see this is also a, a 3 by 2 ratio. So there are small things, I think, that overall could really uh, bring the project together in a more cohesive way. So jumping over into Photoshop, we can take a closer look at some of the images. And really, this is sort of the, the weak link for me. Um, viewed on its own, I think we can start to sort of dissect the, the composition and why that is. Um, I think potentially there is a lovely scene within the center of the frame, um, but it's sort of let down by wanting to include uh, the sky and this sort of very white, uh, misty conditions actually is quite distracting compared to what's a, a lovely, soft, muted scene below. Um, and then there's a few other things that I think are quite distracting. You know. Looking at your edges is, is so important. And I can see that Jeremy's made a conscious decision to sort of uh, shift this in. However, the gap on this side is just complete, is, is completely out of balance. Um, and what that means really is that this tree ends up being far too close to the edge. Um, so the whole image is sort of very, uh, leaned over to the right. And I know why he's done that, because he wants this to fit in that gap. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't quite uh, 
doesn't quite work. So either this has got to be cropped off, um, or as I was alluding to earlier, this entire composition basically needs to change into something that's a bit more like uh, this, perhaps. Um, but then I'm not sure if it, it fits in with with the other body of work. So it's it's one for me that uh, it's interesting, and I think there's elements that could work, but it should really um, probably be re revisited and reshot. Um, there's a few other distractions like. Uh, these sort of very dark leaves up against set against that misty cloudy sky um, where where the contrast range is just too too great and it's quite distracting um, our eye is sort of naturally drawn to areas of high contrast so this this doesn't work um, so moving on to uh, what I think is sort of the the stronger set of four images um, Jeremy does a number of quite clever things here. He, not only in a subject matter, but in terms of scale and um, giving us a sense of the conditions and really bringing the viewer into the scene. So uh, one of the first things is obviously we've got beautiful mountain range, uh, a clear focal point, lovely uh, leading line down to that main area of bright subject matter. Um, and then all these trees, because he's using a 4x5 film camera, he can uh, get them all perfectly straight, which is uh, really lends scale against these mountains um, and gives everything a sort of exceedingly tall feeling. Um, he's also, and I, I do know he's using a fairly wide angle lens here, um, which again stretches that foreground a little bit and draws the viewer's eye, uh, the viewer's eye in. Um, and in terms of the water, I really think that's a, a great motif to include. It comes across in a few of the other uh, images. You can see here, uh, while it's not sort of explicitly in view, there's a footpath over the water. We've got a, a waterfall. And then uh, here, there's sort of a, a lack of water, if you will. Um, so I think that's a great motif that sort of draws all the images together and it brings sort of a, a sense of life and movement to the image. Um, if we, we zoom in, you can see there's some, some great sort of reflections and shimmering water that really, really does uh, bring the image to life, especially set against some of these uh, the smaller details like these flowers. In terms of the edit and the processing, um, I know Jeremy likes to go for this sort of very high contrast look, and it really does lend itself to sort of creating quite a bit of drama with this uh, blooming... Uh, sun creeping over the mountains. Um, but for, for me, the edit is a little bit imbalanced. Um, you can see there's there's a great level of detail that could be brought out in the sky. And when you put it in comparison to uh, sort of all of the, the crust shadows that have essentially got uh, almost no detail in, in the final edit, whereas uh, if we switch over to Lightroom, we can actually have a look Jeremy sent me some of the uh, the raw scans. Um, you know, there's there's not too much detail there, but I think he has actually um, lost some of that detail in uh, whatever scanning software he's using. I'm sure he could bring a bit more detail out um, in the scan, and I think that might balance this sort of this tonal relationship between the foreground and the sky, which is just a little bit too harsh in my opinion. Um, but it does create a lot of drama and that's for sure. And Jeremy's got a, a consistent style across all of his images, as you'll see as we flick through the rest of these three. So this is one where I think uh, we start to see some slightly small inconsistencies where I'm not sure if Jeremy includes man-made objects in all of his images, um, but for me, scenes like the previous one really lend themselves to sort of wilderness and that immersive feeling of being out in nature. And sometimes these uh, man-made objects, including the path, can detract from that. Um, so that that's something that's quite subjective. Personally, I uh, tend to not include them, um, especially if you're trying to 
bring someone into into that sort of feeling of wilderness. Uh, but here, if he's trying to, you know, give a sense of uh, what it's like to be in that place from a, a fairly representational viewpoint, then including it could uh, could arguably be quite successful. Um, I was talking earlier about the, the aspect ratio problem. I feel as though there's a little bit uh, too much on this left-hand side that sort of imbalances uh, the photo. You've got this fairly heavy giant wedge of uh, pine trees there, and the weight of that is just fee uh, drawing my eye over to the left, when really we should be focused on the sort of pretty epic mountain view. Um, and again, I know it's I know it's to balance the sky, uh, but I feel as though that's less important than this detracting from uh, the main subject. And then again, uh, it'll also sort of make the consistency of four by five crops across the images. Um, and we can we can see again it's it's that same editing style of fairly crushed blacks. Um, and if we just have a quick look, I'm not sure if Jeremy, where the where the whites are. Yeah, so he does have um, he does have some good whites coming in. Sorry, he does have some good whites coming up in the clouds. Um, yeah, it's it's just that balance of contrast. Like these shadows, if you make them darker, it'll then make. Uh, these bright bits feel white, whiter without having them actually be white and, you know, starting to lose a bit of detail here. Um, that's sort of just a, a nuance of post-processing, but overall I think a very successful image. Um, moving on. Yeah, again, it's that same um, sort of slightly awkward balance where you've got this giant wedge of uh, trees I think in this case it does balance a little bit better because you've got the the opposing uh, tree bank on the opposite bank of this uh, this river, um, but there's just this big open uh, blank bit of sky that is really quite distracting, as well as on the edge this uh, this tree. So for me, I would crop that down to a four by five, get rid of this sort of slice of information that's. Oh, it's not really bringing anything extra to the image. Um, and that makes this come in from the corner a bit more to draw you up uh, towards that main subject of the mountain. Um, um, not too much more to say on this one. I think it's a it's a lovely scene. But yeah, the it's a bit of a shame that you couldn't have gotten closer, uh, sort of exclude all of this shrub in the foreground and just had the uh, the river and the mountain, which I, th I think that would have made a stronger image. And finally moving on to the last of Jeremy's images, uh, probably my favourite and uh, one of the strongest images from the set. It's this wonderful inviting light, uh, that patchwork, the contrast levels in this I feel are much more balanced between the dark shadows and then you've clearly used a, a a deep red filter to produce this brilliant effect in the sky. Um, however, I think some of these bright areas could be lifted uh, even more just to enhance that feeling. Um, this one, however, is using uh, a slightly longer lens. So these you can tell are certainly this is a quite a wide angle lens for large format. Whereas here, this is more of a, a normal or a long lens. I'm not quite sure. Um, and yeah, it lends a sort of completely different look, but within the same uh, format of these uh, beautiful mountainscapes and trees giving a sense of scale. The lighting in this is, you know, what makes it absolutely sing. Um, it's a bit of a shame that you've got this sort of quite a harsh line running along the bottom, um, but for me, I don't think it detracts too much from the overall impression. Um, again, I'm not sure if these are clipped whites, uh, which would be a, a little bit of a shame, but I think it could do with uh, trying to bring back a little bit of detail in that area of the image. 
So jumping back over into Lightroom quick, when you start to place images next to each other, I think they become even stronger as, as a set. Um, you know, for instance, as a diptych, these sort of op almost opposites where you've got summer conditions and uh, dark mountains and fully uh, trees with, with full leaves versus wintry conditions, snow on the mountains, and completely burned bare trees. I think these sort of juxtaposed uh, landscapes really bring out the fragility. Um, you know, you start to draw relationships between uh, the very small uh, leaves and flowers in the foreground of this one with uh, all of these fine details. You can start to see how they'll fit into, say, a book as uh, opposing pages on a spread. And you, your mind begins to draw conclusions or uh, connections, rather, between the two images, um, as if, you know, this scene sits within a very similar landscape, and at some point a wildfire has come through to uh, unfortunately decimate it. Um, but yeah, I think this has been a, a very strong set of images overall. Uh, however, I would perhaps uh, encourage Jeremy to rethink how these types of images might fit into the project overall. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for sending these in. I've really enjoyed taking a look at them and uh, great work. 